Hi, everyone. Welcome to IOTAF's weekly crypto recap of week number 10. This week on the headline, we have MicroStrategy adding another purchase to their Bitcoin holdings. Goldman Sachs to reopen their crypto futures trading desk by the end of the month. And CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, is auctioning his first tweet ever on a non-fungible token. Plus, we have a few mining-related news. So to start with this week's headlines, MicroStrategy buys 205 Bitcoin for 10 million. So MicroStrategy Inc., the world's largest publicly traded business intelligence company, now owns close to 91,064 Bitcoin. So very close to uh, owning 100,000 Bitcoin and acquired at an aggregate purchase price of about 2.19 billion and an average purchase price of around 24.1 thousand per Bitcoin. Very smart investment by Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, as this investment already over 100% in profit. The last purchase was made when Bitcoin was trading at 47.6 thousand on Friday. So this 205 additional Bitcoin were bought on last Friday. And as a second news, Goldman Sachs to launch crypto trading operation this month after Bitcoin's big surge. So Goldman Sachs have already opened a trading desk, futures trading desk in 2008 after Bitcoin crashed 70%. It was then abandoned later the year before the end of this year in 2018. So right now, they are announcing that they will reopen their future trading desk and it will be managed by Goldman's global market segment. And it's the bank largest division by asset revenue by the end of last year. And it will serve as a market maker for buying and selling securities on behalf of clients, but not actively managing cryptocurrencies itself. So they're also offering a custodian services through uh, Goldman Sachs. Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey has listed his first ever tweet for sale with bids reaching 2.5 million. So here's the tweet, just setting up my Twitter, dated of March 21st, 2006. The buyer will receive a certificate signed by Mr. Dorsey as well as the metadata of the original tweet. It will be sold as a non-fungible token a unique certificate that states who owns a photo, video, or other form of online media. So why these bids are getting to 2.5 million as NFTs are usually very rare. So this one is the one and only first tweet of Mr. Dorsey and it will be sold to one person. So it's very, very rare, kind of like a Picasso painting. There's usually unique pieces and that's why the value is so high so the non-fungible token space is really popular in the past six months and it opens the door to a whole new world for the cryptocurrencies as nfts are undividable kind of like arts so it reaches out to all the artists around this world to join the NFTs as they can sell those art that they're making online. So a, a whole new world for 3D digital arts. PayPal acquires security firm Curve in a bid to expand its crypto ecosystem. So this news just came out this morning. PayPal today confirmed the acquisition of crypto currency security technology provider firm Curve after weeks of rumors about the payments giant first crypto acquisition. So it's now official. PayPal has bought Curve and it's ready to, to expand its crypto ecosystem. Chinese app maker Meitu buys 40 million in BTC and ETH. 
So the Hong Kong listed selfie app company Meitu just announced that it has snapped up 380 bitcoins and 15,000 Ethereum. Meitu has been listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange since 2016 and has a market cap of 11.76 billion. As it's mentioned here, Meitu's Bitcoin investment is a part of their asset allocation strategy and Meitu also said that ETH is a good purchase if it chooses to blockchainify its app. If it chooses to do so on the Ethereum network, it could use that Ethereum to process transaction. So very smart investment here by Meitu. And it's good to see more company allocating cash balances on cryptocurrencies. So the rest of this week's headline is all mining related. So Ethereum ZIP 1559 fee market overhaul greenlit for July. A large majority of Ethereum miners are against the proposal, but that hasn't stopped the developers from scheduling the upgrade for July. So Ethereum improvement proposal, which stands for EIP 1559 will be packaged with the London hard fork this coming July, regardless of the mining industry's discontent with the proposal. According to all core developers call Friday, at least five other EIPs are likely to join EIP 1559 in the London upgrade. So we're talking about a majority of at least 60% of uh, miners that are not in agreement with the EIP 1559 proposal. But here's why also proof of work done by mining through hardware is coming to an end on Ethereum to, uh, on Ethereum in the next two years as Ethereum 2.0 will only support proof of staking by validator nodes. So also this will reduce the payout of Ethereum miners by kind of a lot as right now miners of Ethereum are getting rewarded for the block reward of the processing transaction but also the gas fee was split it through uh, miners and recently the gas fee on Ethereum has been a kind of a problem as high very high fees were not good for the Ethereum network overall so by instead giving those gas fees to miners they will just get block rewards and those gas fees will then be burned instead so on to the next news china's bitcoin miner flee inner mongolia ahead of crypto mining ban so one of the world's biggest bitcoin producing region will soon ban cryptocurrency mining to meet china's clean air goals so here's why the vast majority of Mongolia's crypto farms are run on cold power electricity, which is very bad for the environment. So to be able to help China in that clean air and that clean air goal, then they will ban cryptocurrency mining in Mongolia. And Mongolia is the number one spot for migrating miners from South China uh, that run on hydroelectricity as the cost of electricity is way cheaper in Mongolia as it's really rich in coal. So those miners won't be able to migrate there for the dry season. So Mongolia was representing roughly 7.71% of the world's hash rate between September 2019 to April 2020. And China produced 71.7% of the Bitcoin Zash rate. AMD purposely developing crypto mining GPUs. So according to a report by Linux Hardware, community site Pharonix updated the AMD GPU kernel driver indicates that semiconductor company AMD may be on the road of developing a new crypto specific GPUs for mining. This comes as no surprise to me as also NVDA announced 
that it will do crypto specific GPUs for mining two weeks ago. So AMD has no choice to follow suit. And with the high demand that we're seeing in uh, these uh, graphic processing units, it just makes sense to separate the gamers and the miners as right now the gamers to get one graphic card is it's really hard for them or the price are really really high the next news hive blockchain sees q3 crypto mining income double to 13.7 million thanks to bitcoin's price who has been running like crazy in the past two three months so that's why also uh, crypto mining income had doubled for hive so Hive's share have gained 132% year to date. I chose this news because we're going to have a look at uh, blockchain mining companies chart right after. So to link with this one before we get to the charts, Bitfarm plans massive Bitcoin mining expansion with purchase of 48,000 micro BT devices. The company expects the miners to increase its hashing capacity to 8 exahash from its present 1 exahash once all are operational. So here's the, here's the catch. On this news, it says shipments are stated to begin in January 2022 with the final batch arriving in December of the same year. So this increase in hash rate won't be reflected before at least January 2022, it, they will start to receiving the batch and install miners. But to get to 8 exahash, it's going to take almost two years from now. So I don't think this news will have a lot of impact on the, the charts. So here's the charts. Hive Blockchain Technologies has uh, had a down of... A, 31% is, is new all-time high of uh, two weeks ago. So now we see that uh, so far, it's uh, it's been uh, since the open, it gapped, it kind of gapped up a little, and also we're we're seeing a bit of green. But for Bitfarm, uh, which uh, retraced 55.4% since its all-time high. At the open, we, we it's just standing still on the 0382 Fibonacci retracement level. And Bit Digital, just to uh, have another look at those, Bit Digital had a lawsuit against them, so uh, they they also crashed 59.5 percent uh, on uh, since their all-time high. So for sure, they are more impacted as the lawsuit they have against them. And Marathon also has uh, seen a downtick of minus 37% since its new all-time high. Riot Blockchain uh, has seen a downtick of 48.86% since its all-time high. And Canon is the one less impacted uh, by this drop as it retraced 20.4%, but also uh, it didn't see a huge run-up like the other companies that, that we have in this graph. So to continue on with mining, here's the current difficulty change for uh, the mining uh, that was made uh, three days ago. So minus 1.27%. It's the first time that the difficulty drops on the Bitcoin network since December 27. So three months, almost three months that it didn't drop the difficulty and now it had dropped just a little of minus 1.27%. This also could be reflected on the, the Mongolia cryptocurrency mining ban, which miners are probably starting to move their equipment elsewhere. So to continue on, we're going to have a look at Bitcoin on the higher time frame. So here's the weekly chart for Bitcoin. We closed the last week at just a bit under 51,000. 
And we're about at the same level right now so far on this week. But the previous week's close was really looking not so good in my opinion as this huge bearish engulfing candle on the weekly close was not looking good. At least we reclose over that significant level here and seems to have reclaimed this right now and we're trading in that range. On the daily, Bitcoin looks like it has its first resistance at 52.5 thousand. We went to touch it earlier uh, in the past week. So right now it seems we're seeing wicks over here, but so far it looks like we could even push higher. So that goes for Bitcoin on the higher time frames. To have a look at the, the US dollar currency, so the Dixie has been really performing well in the past seven to eight days. And it's really pushing up right now. And it's following uh, this, uh, it broke out of this uh, 91, uh, 91 uh, level. And right now we see that it's at another significant level of uh, resistance. But so far it's looking like it's gonna touch the, the 200 moving average on the daily. So let's let's keep an eye on that as Bitcoin is priced in US dollar, it affects the BTC price when the USD is getting stronger, of course. On the Bitcoin's futures open yesterday, we saw a little gap up of 2.3% roughly. The gap was closed, so we're going to put a little check mark here as this gap was closed so gap closed and there have all been closed there wasn't no significant significant gap uh in the past uh, two weeks but uh, so far all the other gaps has been filled so the gap closed right here gap filled uh, a few hours after the futures open so now uh, we're ready to uh, probably uh, aim higher depending. So far we've been trading on that range for the past week and a half almost. So we've been uh, just cruising between uh, those lines. Now let's have a look at the BTC dominance. So uh, BTC dominance uh, really getting low uh, at the 61 level right now. And uh, we're very near my out season zone where uh, if we get comfortable in that zone, we can see, we can expect uh, outs to blow up by a lot, uh, like uh, similar to what happened uh, last summer. So there goes for uh, Bitcoin's uh, dominance. And on uh, the market cap, so the total market cap right now sitting at 1.55 trillion and uh, the out market cap without BTC included is uh, sitting at 604 billions. So, all right, guys, this concludes uh, this week uh, extract of the crypto recap presented to you by the Institute of Trading and Finance. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel and please leave a like to show support. And uh, if you want to follow us on the other different social media platform, you can find those links in the description of this video. So I'll wish you guys a good week and I'll see you again next time for another edition.